Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending today's webinar. The health and market situation induces to continue our webinar series with the focus on product relevant for co disease COVID-19. It is a serious pandemic situation we are facing on, and I believe thanks to diagnostic testing or progress in therapy provide a hope to resolve the situation. For example, we nowadays observed very low number of newly diagnosed patients in the Czech Republic, and we are very happy from such development. If you would like uh, put any question during the webinar, please uh, press the button in the upper right corner and type a question to be answered at the end of the webinar. It is a challenge for us, for Biovendor, to offer assays for in vitro diagnostics for research purpose or immunoreagents, which are connected to disease COVID-19. We present these products in a special section called COVID-19 among products and services. Basically, you can find their immunoassays, recombinant proteins and molecular diagnostics directly connected to COVID-19. Alternatively, you can search also the section product by research topic, where you can find additionally indirect related products such as interleukin assays or surfactant proteins assays, MXA assay or many other products. According to current recommendation from WHO, the diagnosis of COVID-19 depends on the comprehensive analysis and detection of VAR genes. Additional diagnostic testing involves serological detection of IgM or IgG antibodies to viral proteins. However, COVID-19 is not just a respiratory disorder. Uh, therefore, it can affect heart, liver, kidney, brain, endocrine or blood systems. The recovery of uh, COVID-19 patients should be monitored with regard to possible damage of this organ and tissue as well. We will start the webinar with very brief scientific and clinical background, continue with molecular diagnostic assays. Consequently, uh, we will present immunoassays and immunoreagents and close the webinar with product related to COVID-19 disease. There is the coronavirus structure and viral receptor on the host cell surface on the picture. The beta-coronavirus genome includes several structure proteins, including the nucleocapsid protein, also called N-protein, which is one of the most abundant proteins in coronavirus. N-protein is a highly immunogenic phosphoprotein, and it is normally very conserved. It is bound on viral RNA, and they both create structure called nucleocapsid. N-protein is actually often used as a marker in diagnostic assays. The next one is a glycoside spike protein called S-protein, which is responsible for receptor binding and membrane fusion. Spike protein consists of two subunits, S1 and S2. S1 contains a receptor binding domain, which is responsible for recognizing and binding with the cell surface receptor. It was reported that COVID-19 infects the human respiratory epithelial cells through interaction with the human angiotensin converting enzyme 2. S2 subunit uh, is the structure which contains basic elements needed for membrane fusion and consequent viral penetration into the cells. M, membrane glycoprotein, and E, envelope protein, are the other two significant structure proteins anchoring on the envelope membrane surface of COVID-19 particles. M protein is a typical transmembrane protein and plays a significant role in virus specific humor response. E protein is a small integral membrane polypeptide that forms ion channels. Either the absence or inactivation of the spike, envelope, or membrane proteins result in attenuated virulence and represent the common target for neutralizing antibodies and vaccines developments. On this slide, I present phylogenetics tree and uh, 
its genomic structure. There are four classes uh, of coronavirus, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. And COVID-19 belongs to beta coronaviruses together with, for example, SARS or MERS viruses. As mentioned, the genome of COVID-19 virus encodes the spike protein, the envelope protein, the membrane protein, and the nucleocapsid protein, which are similar to those from other members of beta coronaviruses, but not identical. Besides the structured proteins, there are also 16 non-structural proteins processed from two long polypeptides corresponding to genes PP1A and PP1B. In February 2020, the International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses announced that virus was named Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome 2, SARS-CoV-2, uh, and on the same day, WHO named the disease as coronavirus disease, COVID-19. Uh, for communication purposes, the virus should be referred as the virus responsible for COVID-19 or the COVID-19 virus. And for the disease should be uh, referred as COVID-19 disease. This helped uh, the better differentiation between virus and disease. There are several guidelines you should take in account, especially WHO uh, or from Pan American Health Organization, or also information uh, about laboratory assays from European Center for Disease Prevention and Control. These guidelines provide information about requirements on assays for clinical practice. On the picture, uh, there is variation of the level of uh, SARS-CoV-2 RNA and protein antigen and IgM and uh, IgG uh, after infection. The blue line represents the presence of both viral together with the protein antigens in a combined nasopharyngeal or uh, oropharyngeal sample. The green line for IgM and the red line for IgG represent antibody kinetics in serum or plasma. According to the current guidelines, two major methodologies can be used for confirmation of viral infection. Either reverse transcription quantitative polymerase chain reaction, RT-PCR, as the gold method, and surgical immunoassays that uh, detect virus-specific antibodies, IgM and IgG. The guideline uh, for diagnosis of SARS-CoV-2 infection recommended by WHO depends on the comprehensive analysis of and detection of viral genes, especially the envelope, uh, e-gene, and the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, also called RDRP gene. RT-PCR method is used for the detection. Alternative, alternatively, the detection and analysis of the N gene is recommended. Additional diagnostic testing involves serological detection of IgM and IgG antibodies to viral proteins, but its clinical or diagnostic use is just complementary method to RT-QPCR and should respect its seven or 10 days delay in release after infection. The seropositivity is generally very low uh, at onset clinical symptoms. After uh, onset clinical symptoms, nucleic acid amplification tests are suggested uh, in the first line to detection of COVID-19 virus in a combined nasopharyngeal or and uh, oropharyngeal sample. At least one target is requested for screening and another one in confirmation test. If the screening test is positive, as well as a confirmation test, the, present, the presence of COVID-19 virus is confirmed. If the screening test is negative, the patient is considered not to have COVID-19 virus. If the screening test is negative, but there are strong clinical symptoms, then another confirmatory method is recommended, for instance, serology tests uh, for anti-COVID-19 antibody testing. Although RTQ-PCR is a high sensitive uh, test 
for SARS-CoV-2, uh, and uh, it has few limitations. RT-QPCR requires high-quality nasopharyngeal web score, which contains sufficient amount of viral RNA. This can be a challenge because the amount of viral RNA not only varies among patients, uh, it can also vary within the same patient depending on the timing of the test uh, and the start of the infection or the onset of the symptoms. In principle, an antibody test together with hematology investigation should be more accurate in uh, latest stages of the disease than PCR tests. Uh, since it reports uh, on the status of the person and not just the presence of var material. The requirements on nucleic acid amplification tests are presented in the guidelines. WHO specified NES and RDRP uh, genes and original recommendation from Charité in Berlin preferred e-gene for screening and RDRP for confirmation. The guidelines suppose more options. Uh, they specify more or less general requirements for sample collection, extraction, or analysis. Talking about the COVID-19 diagnostics, we have to start with the PCR methods for the viral RNA detection. The real-time quantitative PCR is the gold standard for diagnosis and an infection, infectious agent. Therefore, the RTQ-PCR tests represent the frontline response to the SARS-CoV-2 outbreak. We are offering three different kits to cover a wide spectrum of customers not only from hospital laboratories, but also scientists and researchers. Both routine diagnostic laboratories and academic institutions and universities are in the interest of our company. Real-time qPCR technology utilizes the reverse transcriptase reaction to convert RNA into complementary DNA, the cDNA. Then the polymerase chain reaction, PCR, for the amplification of specific target sequences and target specific probes to detect the amplified DNA. The probes are labeled with fluorescence reporter and quencher dyes. All tests consist of three processes in a single assay. Reverse transcription of the target RNA to the cDNA, PCR amplification of the target cDNA and internal control DNA, which is not shown on the picture, and detection of PCR amplicons by fluorescence dye labeled probes. All kits have some common characteristics. They are based on the RTQPCR technology, which enables the quantification of virion in the sample, but they are used only for plus or minus detection of virus. Positive controls and internal controls are included. The positive signal is detected in the FAM channel. Internal control, which is used for test quality of amplification process, is detected on the HEX or JOE channels. Please note, the Life River Kit detects three genes, so three different channels are used for the detection. FAM for the gene ORF1AB, HEX or VIC or GOE for the gene N and Calaret 610 or ROX or Texas Red for the gene E. The probe specific for the internal control is labeled with the fluorophore Psi 5. The Viroreal kit is registered as CIVD in the European Union and is pending for the FDA registration in the United States. The kit includes positive control and internal control te templates. It is approved for RNA isolates from the respiratory tract. It is a single component system 
done in one step RT QPCR assay. Life River. The kit is used for in vitro qualitative simultaneous detection of three genes O, RF1, AB, N, and E of uh, SARS CoV-2 -CoV RNA. It has been validated for upper respiratory tract specimens. It means naso pharyngeal and oropharyngeal extracts, and for lower respiratory tracts, tract specimens uh, like bronchoalveolar lavage fluid and deep cuff sputum. The kit is considered as an aid in the diagnosis of the COVID-19 infection. The A-STAR kit is for research use only. It is intended for qPCR testing for specific RNA in nasopharyngeal swab samples. No cross-reactivity with SARS-CoV classic and various influenza viruses as well as MERS coronavirus were observed. No false negative results have been reported to date. Currently, it is uh, IVD registered in Singapore. <clears throat> what are the genes uh, amplified in the, in the uh, kits? In this slide, you can see LOTSI used for the design of specific primers. The function of appropriate gene is included if it is known. You can compare the gene selected for RTQPCR technology and gene, gene products used in immunoassay kits mentioned later. How the presented RTQPCR tests differ from each other. You can see that the life river has been validated for the wide spectrum of respiratory sample matrices. However, we can expect that the other kits will be successful also on the same materials. The theoretical sensitivity of all kits is absolute. It is one copy per genome per microliter. For the viral real, the true analytical limit of detection has been determined to 13 copies per reaction. Recommended customers are noticed, noticed in the lower row. In, in the next part of the webinar, I would like to introduce immunoassays we can offer for COVID-19 disease. There are summarized many clinical applications for immunoassays, which could be exploited in uh, COVID-19 disease. One of the most uh, important applications is retesting of individuals with clinical signs of COVID-19 disease, but with negative results from RT-QPCR mentioned a few minutes ago. The other one is connected to monitoring of recovery patient with COVID-19 disease. Actually, high IgG level indicates very good recovery and good prognosis. In these patients, a very low or no response from molecular diagnostics testing is expected. From epidemiological point of view, population screening provides information in progress in pandemic. Therefore, immunoassays can be used for this purpose. The last one selected application regards to preparation of plasma from recovery patient uh, for COVID-19 therapy. The highest concentration of therapeutic IgG is expected in individuals with low or undetectable IgM class. There are three uh, CEIVD ELISA kits for anti-COVID-19 antibody determination, namely anti-nucleocapsid protein class IgG, anti-nucleocapsid protein class IgM, and anti-nucleocapsid protein for all classes, actually IgG, IgM, and uh, IgA all together. The kits uh, do not contain standard or positive quality controls, but uh, contain negative control. 
Therefore, we uh, offer also relevant positive controls called humanized IgG or IgM monoclonal antibodies against nucleocapsid protein. The use of positive quality control improved the quantitative determination and allowed to calculate index of positivity, as you will see later. Another assay, human anti uh, S1 RBD ELISA kit, is research use only and determines IgG antibodies against receptor binding domain as the part of uh, spike S1 protein. Uh, this domain is crucial for the specific recognition and interaction with human uh, ACE2 as its receptor. The last immunoassay I'm going to present today is a sandwich ELISA kit for quantitative determination of nucleocapsid protein itself. ELISA kits for anti-COVID-19 antibody are designed as two-step incubation immunoassays. Recombinant viral protein is pre-coated onto the polystyrene microwell and is specifically recognized by antibodies in human serum or plasma pre-diluted 1 to 100 with dilution buffer. Antibodies are captured by immobilized protein during one hour incubation, while the unbound components are washed away. Afterwards, a detection solution containing each RP conjugate is added for another one hour incubation. And next washing, after next washing, HRP substrate uh, solution is at uh, and results in blue color. The reaction is stopped by sulfuric acid and the blue color changed to yellow, which is quantified by micro tip plate reader at 450 nanometers. The color intensity is proportional to the amount of the antibodies captured inside the wells. There are two options how to calculate data. The basic one is recommended for assays running just with blank, negative controls and unknown samples. Blank has uh, to be run at least in doublet and negative control in triplicate. Samples can be run either in singlets or duplicates. For data assessment, negative control is used as quality control. If arithmetic mean from triplicate of negative control is under OD of cutoff value, then quality control passed. In the next step ratio, in the next step, ratio between OD at a 450 nanometer of unknown sample to OD of cutoff value should be calculated to decide about presence of the antibody in samples. Antibodies uh, may be undetectable during the early stage of the disease and in some uh, immunosuppressed individuals. Therefore, uh, negative results obtained with anti-COVID-19 antibody uh, are only indication uh, that the specimen does not contain detectable level of antibodies uh, and any negative results should not be considered as conclusive evidence that the individual is not infected with the virus. The advanced option employs determination of blank, negative control, unknown samples, and positive control or positive sample. Again, the, kit does, uh, the kits uh, do not contain positive control or positive samples, but are available from biovendor or could be prepared in-house by the user. I would recommend to run positive control in triplicate. The data are treated in the same way as for the basic option uh, to decide about antibody presence. Additionally, a uh, user can calculate index of positivity for each unknown sample as the ratio between OD at 450 nanometer of sample and OD uh, at 400 nanometer of positive control or positive sample. The index uh, of Positivity normalizes the data across plate or days. CEIVD assays state typical warning. Establish your own reference range or cutoff value. We follow the same way and additionally suggest procedure 
for in-house cutoff assessment. The cutoff can be established from measurement uh, of COVID-19 negative samples, for example, collected before the COVID-19 pandemic. The type of sample has to be matched perfectly to sample type of patient being determined. Arithmetic mean of OD of 450 nanometers plus free uh, time standard deviation provide the cutoff value for reference. This is a summary from clinical validation as a part of CEIVD certification. Clinical validation study uh, of the ELISA kits uh, was conducted in 2020 in Shenzhen in China. Samples were collected from COVID-19 confirmed cases with clinical symptoms, laboratory abnormalities, or pulmonary imaging manifestations. It means the study covered uh, severe or mild cases. Uh, no tests have been performed on specimens from late, uh, latent infections or patients with the incubation uh, period. The kit showed a higher positive deten uh, detection rate in specimens from patients with delayed onset. Therefore, the interpretation of the test should consider the specimen collection time. There was 511 individuals enrolled in the study in total. Uh, 206 of them were positive and 207 negative. The clinical specificity and clinical sensitivity was over 90%. Just for IgM against the nucleocapsid protein <coughs> was close to 70%. The best diagnostic efficiency was observed for uh, total antibody anti-nucleocapsid protein. On this slide, uh, there are presented a kinetic profile of serum IgM and IgG against nucleocapsid protein and spike protein RBD. Uh, there, there are 10 patients with uh, severe disease and uh, 13 patients with uh, mild disease. The determination was uh, carried in serum samples, which were collected 14 days or longer after symptom onset. Very high seropositive, seropositivity was observed. Actually, uh, 94 for uh, uh, anti NPIgg, 88% uh, for anti NPIgm, uh, or almost 100 uh, for anti S1 IgG class. The immunoassay for quantitative determination of nucleocapsid protein is a high sensitive sandwich ELISA assay with plate precoated uh, antibody uh, with anti uh, nucleocapsid protein. Uh, the antibody bends uh, nucleocapsid protein from human <coughs> sample. Biotin labeled antibody and consequently streptavidin HRP are used for the detection. The kit contains calibrator and the calibration range uh, is from 31 to 2000 picogram per ml. And the sensitivity of the assay is about 5 picogram per ml. Despite of high sensitivity of the assay, the end user should consider that viral protein uh, or RNA uh, are just rare present in human blood. And uh, on the other hand, valve or sputum or nasal swab extracts are more relevant type of samples for such assay. The assay is more or less intended for research projects to better understand pathophysiology of uh, COVID-19 disease. For instance, the results published in the Journal of American Medical Association showed small percentage of blood samples to be positive in PCR test but also suggesting that COVID-19 uh, infection sometimes may be systemic. On just one slide, I would like to present uh, also immune reagents. They could be used, for example, as the source of material for manufacturers or broad uh, pharmaceutical studies. 
I can share that we are really successful with sales of recombinant proteins. So I believe uh, that brief information might be interesting uh, for you as well. We offer three different recombinant nucleocapsid proteins and all of them are produced in E. coli. The first one in the table is without any tag and its uh, antigenicity was validated in 16 patient serum samples. The protein was coat on the plate and uh, anti-nucleocapsid uh, protein antibodies were determined. The declared purity of the protein is over 95%, but in reality it exceeds 99%. The high purity proteins uh, are very crucial protein for this assay arrangement. On the third position in the table, uh, there's a mosaic nucleocapsid protein with uh, immunodominant uh, regions, which are fused to his uh, uh, tag at the C-terminal part of the protein. Mosaic protein actually means that the domains in the proteins are in another order in comparison to the original protein. Mosaic proteins therefore uh, present epitopes, which are normally available with difficulties. We also offer recombinant spike S1, spike S2 proteins, or angiotensin convert, uh, converting enzyme 2 with confirmed binding activity to COVID-19 virus. As a leading developer and a manufacturer of IVD and life science products, Bivendor is committed to helping public health authorities to manage the spread of COVID-19 and to contribute the research, the research related to the SARS-CoV-2 virus. It is of the utmost importance to gain detailed knowledge about the virus biology, the process of COVID-19 infection, and to accelerate the discovery and development of more effective drugs as well as patient's care protocols. A growing number of grants and funding opportunities for COVID-19 research projects can be expected. Besides the direct detection of the virus and disease diagnosis, we have to investigate the mechanisms of how the, vir the virus damages patients. Here you can see that SARS-CoV-2 virus attacks all key organs of humans. The primary target is lung, but its attacks to the heart, kidney and other organs are often deadly. The virus attacks the lungs where it can turn deadly. Frontline white blood cell re cells release inflammatory chemokines, which in turn summon more immune cells that target and kill virus infected cells, leaving a stew of fluid and dead cells. This is pneumonia. Some COVID-19 patients deteriorate, often quite suddenly, developing a condition called acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS. Some studies have shown elevated levels of inflammation inducing cytokines in the blood of hospitalized COVID-19 patients. It is often called cytokine storms and is known in, in many uh, virus infection diseases. <clears throat> it is a disaster, disastrous uh, overreaction of the immune system. Also called cytokine release syndrome, CRC, or hyperinflammatory inflammatory syndrome. The real morbid morbidity and mortality of this disease is probably dri uh, driven by this out of proportion inflammatory response to the virus, has been said. Biovendor offers a broad portfolio of cytokine uh, ELISA kits, and here uh, we present those which may be relevant to the COVID-19 patients. I would particularly mention the human interleukin 6 ELISA, interleukin 1 beta, soluble interleukin 2 receptor ELISA, and 
tumor necrosing factor alpha. In some people who survive ARDS brought on by COVID-19, lung fibrosis develops. Lung fibrosis means the scarring of lung tissue. The scar tissue can destroy the normal lung and make it hard for, for oxygen to get into the blood. Lung fibrosis cannot be cured because the scarred changes in the lung tissues do not regress. But the progression of pulmonary fibrosis can be delayed and sometimes even stopped if detected in time. Soluble <coughs> surfactant proteins, SPA, SPD, Glapsel, prof uh, Glapsel protein, CC16, are important host defense components against respiratory allergens and pathogens. Serum <coughs> in serum, SPA, SPD, and uh, another protein, KL6, can be used for the assessment of pulmonary fibrosis onset or disease progression. The protein SPD correlated significantly with uh, anti-SARS COVID uh, coronavirus classic specific uh, antibodies in the present SARS infection, in, in the previous SARS infection. It has been postulated that the treatment of ARDS secondary to coronavirus infection can be treated with installation of surfactant pre preparations that contain SPD. We offer all those mentioned, uh, <coughs> we, we offer essays to determine all, the, all of those uh, mentioned pulmonary markers. I think that the human surfactant protein D, uh, ELISA, is the most important uh, from this list. Secondary infection represents a severe complication in COVID-19 patients. The MXA protein is selectively increased in patients with uh, viral infection and may be used for rapid distinction between viral and bacterial respiratory infections. CRP and procalcitonin have established positions as general biomarkers for bacterial infections. They play a key role in the identification of secondary bacterial infection and allow to prevent the complications associated with severe COVID-19 status. BioVendor offers ELISA kits for all those three markers for uh, infection disease. The kidneys abundantly endowed with uh, the receptor protein AC2 present and present another viral target. The lung is the primary battle zone, but a fraction of the virus possible attacks the kidney. And here you can see how particularly the acute kidney injury increases the number of deaths among patients uh, with COVID-19. BioVador offers a spectrum of uh, <coughs> ELISA kits to determine acute kidney injury markers, where uh, the cystatin C ELISA, NGL ELISA, symmetric dimethyl arginine ELISA seems to be the most uh, relevant in the context of coronavirus infection. Thank you for attention. I hope that you will stay safe uh, at your homes and at your uh, offices as well. So take care and bye bye.